Hello and welcome to Open Ola Certified Associate or OECA courses. In this episode, I'm going to introduce the Open Ola basics, including the installation procedure and some use cases. Open Ola is a free and sustainable open source oasis designed to help users worldwide with their development needs. Operated by the Open Ola community and extending to, world, to users worldwide, Open Ola is designed to run diverse applications like cloud comp computing and AI that are not supported by conventional systems. Further, Open Ola accommodates processors of varying archit architectures like ARM and x86 to unlock the full potential of high compute GPUs. It's thanks to the efforts of the open source community that OpenOla is, uh, is able to provide an intuitive yet performant platform that is advancing the software and hardware application ecosystem. OpenOla community releases are available in two types. One is the innovation release, which supports the technical innovation of Linux enthusiasts with the latest content. Generally, an innovation version is released every half a year. The other is called as LTS, or Long-Term Support Release, which is a stable version of OpenOla and is released every two years. Now, let's see how to install OpenOla. This is doable in just three steps. To do so, we must first prepare the environment. OpenOla supports both ARM and x86 platforms. Since these two platforms are incompatible with each other, OpenOla must be configured accordingly. One is based on the Taishan server, the Quenpong processor. The other is a PC-based x86 architecture. We'll look at the PC method later. But first, let's sit on the Taishan server. Before we start, we will read the ISO image from the OpenOla.org website. Next, select an installation mode. OpenOla is installed just like other OSs. To deploy it on the old host, you can use a USB flash drive, CD-ROM, or virtual CD-ROM drive, or you can use PXZ to install it on multiple hosts in batches. Next, on the installation wizard, you need to set the system settings, such as the installation language, installation location, software version, host name and network configuration. Visit the OpenOla community openola.org to download the latest ISO image. On the home page, choose downloads, the latest version appear. Here we choose 2309. On the display page, set architecture and scenario and select a required type to download. Open VirtualBox and click New. Set the VM name, for example, OpenOla, set type to Linux. Set version to other Linux 64-bit, click Next. Set base memory to 2048 MB. Set processors to 2, click Next. Choose Create a virtual hard disk now and set disk size to 20 GB. Click Next, then click Finish. After the VM is created, select it and click Settings. Configure the storage, mount the virtual CD ROM. Choose empty, click the small CD icon, and click the second option to open the ISO image downloaded. Then configure the network. Set adapter 1 and attach it to a bridge adapter. Select a link that can access the internet. Then click OK. The VM configuration is complete. Select the VM and choose Start Normal Start. There are three installation options. Here, the first one is taken as example. The system now reads files from the CD-ROM. You can see normal OK prompts. If an error prompt or other problem appears, check whether the downloaded ISO image is complete. Next, the installation language page is displayed. Select a language and click Continue. Select installation destination. Choose Custom and click Down. Click the plus sign in the lower left corner. First, create a root partition. Set the capacity to 10,240. The unit here is MB. Click Add Mount Point. Next, 
create a swap partition and set the capacity to, to 4096 MB. And then create the boot partition, set the capacity to 512 MB. And then create the EFI partition, set the capacity to 512 MB. After creating the four partitions, click down. Click Access Changes. We are back to the main page. Click Software Selection. Set the base environment to Server. Click down. Choose Network and Host Name. In the lower left corner, set the host name, for example, OpenOla. Enable the NIC. Click down. Next, choose Time and Date. I set the time zone. Click down. Next, set the root account. Enable the root account and set a password. Click down. So far, the basic configurations are complete. Click Begin Installation. As you can see, there are 729 packages to be installed. The first number in indicates the packages that are installed. This is going to take a few minutes. Just wait until the installation is complete. Now the, the installation is complete. On the lower right corner, click the small CD icon. Click Remove Disk from Virtual Drive and click Force Amount. Then choose Media Reset. The system enters a normal boot. So far, the installation has been complete. You can log into the system as the root user. As I said, OpenOla supports two architectures and as such, they support boot modes. For x86, both next and the UEFI modes are supported, while for ARM, only the UEFI mode is supported. The installation wizard provides three installation options. The first is Quick Startup to directly install the OS. The second and default method is to check the software package to install the OS. This option is recommended for the production environment. The third is troubleshooting. It's divided into two modes. Install OpenOla 2309 LTS in basic graphs mode, where the video driver is not started before the system boots and runs. And the rescue the OpenOla system, where the installation process is printed in the VNC or BMC. And the serial port is unavailable. Here are some use cases. Note that OpenOla does not provide a UI console. After logging into the system as the root user, run the following commands to view system or resource information, such as CPU, memory, and the drives. Run the ifcfg file to configure the network. For static networks, you need to modify the file in board. ENP4S0 is an example network port. For dynamic networks, you also need to change the file in board. EM1 is an example network port. The following commands are used to install, uninstall, and upgrade the software. For more details and about OpenOla, visit the OpenOla docs. This concludes today's courses. We hope you found it useful, and if you did, remember to follow us on our socials. Remember to join us in our community discussions or contact us if you have any questions. Thank you for watching and see you next time.